problem number six. Pro oh, that's too skinny. I want to use this tool. Problem number six. I had to restart my computer so everything got reset. Okay, if M and K are positive, and all right, now we have something that looks fairly complicated, and they say that 10, 10 M squared K to the negative one is equal to 100 M. What is m to the negative one in terms terms of k? So let's see if we can simplify that thing I wrote at the top. k to the negative one is equal to 100 m. Well, what happens if you divide? Well, let's divide both sides by 10. So you get m squared k to the negative one. That's the same thing as m squared over k is equal to, and we divide the other side by 10, is equal to 10m. Let's divide both sides by m, and they're positive, so we can do that. So it's not 0. So you get m over k is equal to 10, right? Because m squared divided by m is just 10. And so you could say that, if we want to, we could say that, well, let's just say m is equal to 10k, right? But they want they don't want us to figure out what m is in terms of k. They want to know m to the negative one. Well, m to the negative one is just one over m. So if we just invert both sides of this, we know that one over m is equal to one over ten k. And that's the same thing, of course, as m to the negative one. And one over ten k, that's choice D. Problem number seven. We are on problem number seven that I will do in Move. Edna and Nancy leave the house for a common friend at the same time and walk for four hours. Four hours is how far they walk. Edna walks due east at the average rate of four kilometers per hour. So Edna walks, oh, that's, that's west. Edna walks east at four kilometers per hour. Maybe four hours. Nancy walks due north at an average of three kilometers per hour. So Nancy is going to walk north, and for Nancy, I guess, and for north, and for north at three kilometers per hour. Three kilometers per hour. I'm doing this a little bit messy, but you get the point. Nancy's going north, Edna's going east. What is the straight line distance between them in kilometers at the end of four hours? At the end of four hours. So let's just this is Pythagorean theorem. At the end of four hours, how far has Edna traveled east? They're starting at the same point. Oh, I don't like that. Nah. Use it slightly thick. How far has Edna gone? East. Well, she's gonna be going four kilometers per hour. She's gonna be going four kilometers per hour times four hours, and that equals sixteen kilometers, right? That's how far Edna went east. Now, how far did did uh, Nancy go north? Well, she went at. Oh my God! I was using the line tool. Oh, undo. She went north. So same thing. She went north at so three kilometers per hour, right? That's what I said. Yeah, three kilometers per hour times four hours, so she went traveled to twelve kilometers. This is a Pythagorean theorem problem. They want to, so at, the, at at after four hours, Nancy's there, Edna's there. And you just need to figure out the straight line distance between them. We just have to figure out this. And actually a trick to this, I mean you could you know you could just say let's say that we want to solve for x, right? You could say that x squared is equal to twelve squared plus 16 squared. And you could, you know, figure it out. Or you could make the further realization that that this is essentially a 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? You could say, that, well, this is 4 times 4. This is 3 times 4. So this side is going to be 5 times 4, right? If you remember your 3, 4, 5 triangle Pythagorean theorem. If you don't, just do this. You get x squared is equal to 144 plus 256. So x squared is equal to 400. And then you get x is equal to 20. So either way, you could do it either way. This would have been a little bit less math. So x is equal to 20. So it, should, it is choice 
E. All right. Let me show you. Yeah, east. The other one walks north. Right. It's choice E. All right. Problem number five. Oh, sorry. Problem number eight. This is actually I'm using an old workbook that was done used by my cousin when she was in seventh grade. She's now in tenth grade, and she's marked up some of these problems. So I have a little bit of trouble reading. And not not she was only in seventh grade, but some of the problems are circled incorrect. So that's what's making me second guess myself every now and then. But anyway. Back to the problems. She now doesn't get any problems incorrect. But anyway, back to the problems. All right, the figure above shows. She's actually the reason why I started doing this because I I worked with her, and uh, she saw improvement. And then I worked with her brother, and they saw improvement. I said, well, let me just make a bunch of videos so a bunch of people can can see some improvement. So let's see what they have drawn here for problem number eight. So let me draw the x-axis. Let me draw the y-axis. And then they drew a parabola. The figure above shows the graph of a quadratic function that has a minimum at point one one. So the point one comma one, it has its minimum point. Let me do that in a different color. It's a minimum point there. If f of b is equal to f of three, which of the following could be the value of b? So on the graph they drew, if you go to three, one, two, three. And if you just follow up, let's see, you go to one, two, three, four, five. So you go up five. So one, two, three, four, five. There's like a point here, right? And at least this side of the parabola or of the quadratic goes something like this. Oh, I'm trying to draw as carefully as possible, right? And the other side is symmetric, right? It does. It'll do the same thing. It'll it'll go. And they want they say f of b is equal to f of three. So f of three is here, and you know if you want to get the exact number, it's like f of three is equal to five. But that actually doesn't even matter because this is one, right? Because this is the point one one. This is the point. This is x is equal to three. And the big realization is that well, this is a quadratic. This is a parabola. This is its minimum point, so it's going to be symmetric around this point, right? So if it reaches if it reaches five here, so it took two units to reach fi to reach five going to the right, going in the positive x direction. So similarly, it's going to take two units to reach five going in the negative x direction, right? So what's two units less than one? So one, two, you'd get to negative one. So at b could be equal to negative one. Actually, b would be equal to negative one. So the correct answer is c choices b is equal to negative 1. Let's see if I can squeeze in problem number 9. Problem number, oops, problem number 9. A family of five is planning a four-day camping trip. Each, so five people times four days. Each person will need one bottle of water for each day of the trip. So times one bottle, right, per day, per person. If water is sold only in three bottle packages, how many packages must the family buy for the trip? Well, how much water do they need? Eat, there's five people, four days, and they each need a bottle of water a day. So they need 20 bottles, right? They need 20 bottles. And it only comes in packages of three or multiples of three. So they could, you know, if they bought six packages, it would be 18 bottles. That's not enough. So they have to get seven packages. Seven packages times three is equal to 21 bottles. So they have to buy seven packages. Not too bad, huh? All right, I'll, I'll do the next problem in the next video.